a hero mm-hmm. Brighton fan. I am a Brighton fan, uh, which is quite good currently. Yeah, absolutely. So firstly, can you talk to me a little bit about yourself? So currently, uh, I write for The Athletic, which is a sports journalism company um, based mm-hmm. in sort of the UK here, as well as out, out in America. Um, and my role is, is a tactics writer. So I'm sort of watching games or, you know, watching players and um, I guess just looking for details, really, uh, looking to sort of try and explain, you know, where games get won and lost or um, mm-hmm. players sort of come into form or went out of form, basically trying to explain why what's happening on the pitch is is happening. My background from university is in is in football coaching and then performance analysis. Mm-hmm. Um, last year I was working as an academy performance analyst in, in the Premier League, so actually mm-hmm. sort of filming games, coding stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And as, as I mentioned, I've got experience or coaching. So Golden Thread has been for me trying to work out what's going on on a football pitch and then using that information to either develop players, develop a team, or now it's to you know make people subscribe, make people read and Hopefully mm. to make football fans more knowledgeable uh, and me more knowledgeable and make people make people happy. Yeah, sweet man. Yeah, I've been a big fan of Athletic for a while. You guys provide by far the best in-depth article in my view. Uh, you use your, your source uh, from the Athletic often, so uh, well yeah. done to you guys. And yeah, <laughs> thanks for that. For you, how was Brighton when you were a kid opposed to now? How have you guys evolved? Skyrocketed sort of through the leagues. My dad is very much someone who remembers and I, I wasn't born when the old ground was a thing. Um, so I hear lots of stories from him about that. Going up through sort of the football league, going and winning League One, you know, winning promotion at the mm. final at the Millennium Stadium, which I think the game he took my, my sister and my, my older brother to. Really, the, the bulk of my uh, adolescent years was being in the Championship. And then as I became an adult and mm-hmm. um, grew up through there and on the pursuit and got promoted to the Premier League. So we've mm. just, we've really been on this constant upward curve. Um, at some yeah. point, you're thinking, we're probably due to plateau. It's probably quite hard to keep doing this, but because, right. you know, Potter's come in and, and succeeded. Yeah. And now some of the like Zerbi. Um, it's still sort mm-hmm. of going upwards and you're sort of like, I want to enjoy it, number one, because this is incredible. And, and my dad will say to me after a game like, oh, if someone said to you 10, 15 years ago, this is where you'd be, you'd probably laugh at them. But at the same yeah. time, you're like, losing one at home to Fulham when you're pushing for Europe is a bad thing. And it's actually interesting because it's created quite a divide in the Brighton fan base where some of the older mm. generation are very much so right. we should be grateful for everything because we almost went, went bust 25, 26 years ago, almost went out of the Football mm-hmm. League and probably wouldn't exist anymore. And then there's mm-hmm. younger fans because to my age that haven't got those lived memories that go, well, we can maybe respectful of that and say, look, we want to achieve this now. And it's it's a division I hope, you know, wish didn't really exist and that people could just do a bit mm-hmm. of both. But uh, it's great now to see Brighton recognised like internationally, seeing fans from around yeah. the world like, coming to games is... It's just a bit crazy to me. Uh, I think it's a really cool mark of success. People speak about trophies a lot and like, you know, the measurable things like the league position, but yeah, you, mm-hmm. you get people coming across the globe and being like, oh, I want to watch Brighton mm-hmm. or certain players. It's uh, that to me is just, it's just wild. Awesome. So I'm a Liverpool fan. Yes. My condolences. <laughs> well, actually, no, not after the weekend. No, actually, no, 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 yeah, yeah. I'm all good now. Uh, mate, I mean, you got thumped us and I deservedly see. so. Look, to be honest, th- th- there's a part of me that want to see Brighton in Europa League next year. Like, I reckon you guys will do well. I want to see how, how you guys will do. Mm. I don't know how, if you guys have the depth, but looking at your first 11, man, I can see you guys going pretty far into like Europa League. So we're still competing for Europe. So, um, you know, not not full-heartedly, I, uh, <laughs> I can support you guys. But there is a part of me that, yeah, I really want to see Brighton and, well, even Fulham Brentford. Let's hear about Mitoma. Mate, it's been crazy over here. Obviously, him at the World Cup was crazy, like that, that goal. That was obviously a super big deal. But since then, I'm just hearing from a lot of non-football fans that they've started watching Brighton. Hmm. Can you tell me what your thoughts on him? Or what you, Because he went on loan last year, I think, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he was on loan in Belgium at a club called Union saint Joa, which is co-owned by Tony Bloom, who's Brighton's... Chairman? Yeah, Brighton's chairman. I was head off the left a lot in the sort of typical Matoma style where, you know, you can go at defenders 1v1, he can play with teammates where he can play 1-2s. Played mm. quite a bit on the bench, to be fair. He wasn't quite a breakout season on the European stage. I mean, I've seen his numbers and watched a lot of his highlights um, when he joined from Kawasaki. Um, I was amazed at how he kept sort of scoring the same sorts of goals. He kind of gave me visions of Iron Robin, as someone who grew up watching mm. just off the other side of the pitch where you almost know mm. what he's going to do and yet you still can't stop right. it because he's so quick, he's so incisive. Yeah. And at Brighton now, he's really started to add variety to his game as well. So his, his first Premier League goal was a header uh, and he scored a header mm-hmm. um, the other week against Bournemouth to, to win the game. And I think just from a, percent of a, a Brighton fan, um, he's been a match winner. And this is a piece I wrote in actually mm. for the Athletic at, yeah, yeah, um, a short while ago was, thank you, this, that's what Brighton needed. He had the most draws in the last mm. five Premier League seasons and um, more so than under Graham Potter where struggled to score yeah. goals and maybe make chances. It wasn't since maybe... 2017, 2018, when we had uh, a winger called Jose Izquierdo, um, mm. Colombian, I think he is, uh, and Anthony Knockart, who a Frenchman, a right winger, he's mm. left footed to 
to have those sorts of players that want to cut inside that are quick and um, maybe sort of goes through a game quote unquote sometimes at points um, mm. but will come along and we'll get you that mm. moment um, and that's what, that's what Matoma's been in he's been incredible his speed his straight line running speed um, his ability as well from sort of a standing start I, I think Trent Alexander-Arnold is probably sick of the sick of the sight of him as, yeah someone who oh, yeah. just kept turning him inside out going both ways and, and the problem is that for most fullbacks normally it's quite a safe thing where you say okay I'm defending against the, an inverted winger so everything he wants to do is going to be dribbling inside to shoot towards goal he doesn't right. really do that a lot there's one goal at Leicester yeah. where he does that and he puts it top corner but mm -hmm. everyone starts showing on the outside and he's so quick, he just beats yeah, him the pace him. on the outside. Right. And then he gets his close to goal, he gets into a cutback position or, you know, he gets, he has Purvis to shoot it down, who's a great left back overlapping him. And he probably doesn't get enough credit because mm. he's constantly passing True. to Matoma, making runs that take defenders away. But the supply line is there. Like he's got McAllister and Caicedo who are two phenomenal, yeah, mate, definitely players, European yeah. level footballers that are playing you sure. passes. It's not, he's not playing um, sort of hero ball. It's not just... Solly March on the yep. other side is in the form of his life. Yeah, and Liverpool um, knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I apologise for bringing that up. No, no, I'm good. Man. When he came over, I mean, he must have been one of the many players that you guys brought in. Was anyone expecting anything uh, last year or this year? Brighton fans, I think some of them have quite high expectations um, for any mm. signing. And to be fair, I think that might be a football fan thing in general, that you see a signing, yeah. everyone gets excited and goes, they're going to be perfect. Right. I think yeah. they maybe tempered it a bit by just that he hadn't played a huge time in Belgium. So I don't think he made his first start until October, which is when we beat Chelsea. Right. Um, he was mm. playing off the bench a lot. He came on at Anfield and looked yeah. really, really good. Um, mm, yeah. Maybe his role is to come off the bench with 30 minutes to go, like you get five subs now, um, mm. you know, run the condensed mm. season, players are going to be tired. But he's found a way to do that for a minute one. And I'm amazed when I watch him now, how it's not the first opportunity he gets every game. He tends to test the fullback. Um, he doesn't dribble every time he gets the ball, but it's normally early on. He goes, let me have a go, see what they've got, see how they're going to defend. So yeah, I, I think there was maybe a degree of expectation more once we'd seen him. Again, I think people just like players that dribble that are exciting, that get you off your seat yeah, players. That's true. They're not always my favourite type of player, mm -hmm. which is probably me being a bit more boring and, and coach orientated, of not always wanting mm -hmm. someone that might lose the ball and always going to dribble. But he's great because you know you've always got a threat with him no matter what's happening in the game you can always go look mm. if nothing's working we had it a little bit with Tarek Lamptey we'd be struggling to break down a team and you're almost like just can we give it to Lamptey and hope he does something and you need just those mm. players to you know almost be a cheat mm. code almost be a pick lock to say you're going to get me through Cross Lake Fontale is like the model club right here right now they found the right model recruited the right players really good academy playing like unison football in every age they're doing really well after college he popped up and he was obviously killing it in J League. He, he absolutely killed it. But my reaction was always, man, you wasted four years of your prime going into college. Yeah, I wish he played professionally 18 and went to Europe when he was like 21. To be honest, I never believed he would be able to do the same thing that he was doing in J League in Europe, let alone Premier League. He seems to find a way and at least at, at the moment it's still working. So I've been intrigued to see the comments you made about his choice to stay in education. I think he's made he said stuff about like physically being a bit undeveloped at the time. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen anything about his thesis that came out that his dribbling yeah. babies. I'd love to read the whole thing actually. I'm desperately trying to find a copy. So if anyone has legally or otherwise sourced one um, and wants to send it my way and also hopefully please translate it for me. Um, that would yeah, be yeah. phenomenal. A Japanese player doing well in Premier League is just pretty rare, particularly a Tekken player. So there's a side of me just always thinking, oh, mate, it's not going to last. Like, I'm just kind of like getting expectation low. you have any thoughts? I mean, he's in a good system currently, which is what Deserby plays. Um, he's not the only wide player. He's got, as I mentioned, Purvis to shoot now. He's constantly passing to him and running forward. And mm. he's got, you know, really good central midfielders and, and a good number 10. And Evan Ferguson now is number mm. nine, who's really good sort of receiving back to goal and can then sort of set passes off to him. So as long as all that's in place, I don't see any reason why he can't continue to succeed. Um, mm. I appreciate it does then become more difficult the more people can research you and also get used to just playing against you but I think as we often see with certain players that have got physically you know attributes that just aren't yeah. uh, you can't do anything to stop it someone like myself has just not got the, the max speed to keep them at home but it's not physiologically built to do that the same for I guess really mm. tall players right like this you can't just yeah. grow six inches it doesn't work like that mm. and he's had a really good variety to his game so as I mentioned his first goal was a header off a cross um, yeah. and he's shown that a bit now to sort of come in from the left when Arch is crossing or someone's crossing from the right I mean his, his numbers it's probably going to be hard to sustain that long term um, mm. he's not someone who constantly gets in like tapping positions he does score from sort of tough angles um, but he scored right. he scored big goals he's come up clutching big moments and to be honest with you, Brighton fans would say that's exactly what, what they've needed for, for the longest time. Um, so they're probably yep. not, not fussed if it's 
you know, if he goes through a patch and then doesn't score for a bit because he's always going to carry that threat. Um, maybe that'll be harder to do later in his career if he gets, you know, older and, and you know, doesn't quite have the pace in his legs. I don't know if he can do that for sort of 15, 20 years. Um, mm -hmm. But from a, a selfish Brighton fan's perspective, if he does that for two, two, three seasons or not even that and then moves on to a bigger mm -hmm. club or, or gets picked up, then um, he, he's kind of the best way I can describe him as an Mbappe light version. Um, mm. not quite as good but a similar sort of model of player I not hope it isn't an insult because I think that's a really big compliment <laughs> no, 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 mate. I think uh, <laughs> yeah I think every Japanese viewers right now will be really happy with that comparison and Brighton uh, fans uh, they like what they see oh elated there's there's Japan flags in you know in the away end in the home end every single game there's, there's people coming over to watch him play and um, they actually repurposed uh, a chant that was formerly for Eve Basuma a song of tequila just ending with Basuma and it's now Matoma I think it might have been one after the, the Liverpool win where they were playing that over like the loudspeaker at the end of the game and the whole crowd are like chanting it so <laughs> where i sit i'm up in Sort of the the stand where you uh, see it filmed from the TV. As soon as he gets the ball, it, there are quite literally people getting up on their feet as soon as he gets it. Like you know, maybe oh, it right. becomes awesome. a harsh degree of expectation for like every time do something. But yeah. it's almost like if it's if the game is going a bit stale for thirty minutes in, it's come on, give give the ball to Kaoru. Let's see, see what we can do. Um, and he's he is he's exciting as someone who maybe looks at things with a bit more structure and. I don't always mm. want to give it to the good dribbly guy, but sometimes I'm like, right, right, right. come on, let's, let's let's let him have a run, sort of thing. Is he's, he's really yeah. good fun to watch. No, that's um, I'm getting a bit of shiver just hearing this. He's our national hero now, and uh, yeah, hopefully this continues. And, and for me, yeah, it'd be great if we can see Brighton in Europe. Well, if you guys go to Europe, I'd imagine he'll stay. And that's the hope, right? Yeah, that qualifying that would keep him, might keep. Or Caicedo signed a contract extension, but might keep McAllister too. Like it's uh, yeah, it's beneficial for I think players in the club. So fingers crossed. Right.